We wish you a happy Halloween. We wish you a happy Halloween. We wish you a happy Halloween and a Merry Christmas. Good tidings we bring to this Christmas sphere. Good tidings for this remake that Dwibs did pick here. We won't leave until we commentate. We won't leave until we commentate. We won't leave until we commentate. So what have we here, Godwibs? Hello everybody and welcome to part two of my little duology thing for this Halloween or Christmas or whatever. Honestly, they kind of feel interchangeable at this point. Like Christmas, you also hang up um, items around the house. And they also fair. have a scary figure at his, head, at his head. To be fair, Dwebs, you're not really helping the idea of people starting to put the Christmas decoration way earlier when they need to. This is the 2006 remake of Black Christmas. Uh, this time, directed and written by Glenn Morgan, who was previously known for making episodes of The X-Files. And also, this is apparently the final movie that was composed by Shirley Walker before she died a few weeks before the movie came out. To add to what Waves just said, to be specific, this is the European cut, as in the original version of the movie. As we will explain later, when it became, became exported to properly to North America, a new ending was actually made with an extra bit added onto it, so there's a starking difference between the cuts that you watched. If I recall correctly, the Blu-ray season Blu-ray has an option to select which one, so if you're using that, you should be using that to be in sync with us, but that's the key important, uh, you know, difference difference in them, so be on the lookout if you want to watch this movie along with us. Start before the Dimension Films logo in 3, 2, 1, click. This movie was, a, was very divisive when it came out, I remember that. Um, these days it's still relatively divisive. Some people think because the 2019 movie is much worse than this, they believe this one is a bit better. But others think it's still bad on its own, and I'm mostly onto that set the ladder category. But you have to be able to see ah. for yourself. I'm curious. Oh god, this is a lot louder than Christmas the original. <laughs> oh god, I'm curious. we're not even past Halloween yet. I'm curious, Tio. Have you like seen all the Black Christmas movies at this sadly, point? Sadly, I. Well, okay, not sadly. I had because you know I I ended up watching reviews of it by people like Phelos, so, you know. So I was actually curious to see you know what uh, what the fuss was about. Um, if I can describe the, the 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 movies in one word, the first one is innocence because you know it was done in a time where it wasn't you know that prevalent that sentiment. This one, try hard. Uh, this is the, the peak mid 2000s edge in wanting to actually, you know, portray uh, a franchise. So, Ooh, my yeah, favorite. Well, yeah, on the subject, born, yeah. and on the subject of edge, the poster doesn't call it Black Christmas; it calls it Black Xmas. Whoa, this is this is the extreme. <laughs> Okay. At the, okay, very, okay. at the very least, it's not used, for example, by those people on Fox News that tell the war about Christmas or some shit like that. Well, well the one that doesn't exist. To yeah. be fair, the whole Xmas thing has always been a Christmas thing, but yeah, yeah. that's the, exactly the thing, Joe. Like, it always has been, thing. but people have started bitching about it recently. But that's not oh, the point. God. So anyway, uh, if you recall our commentary of the original Black Christmas movie. That movie seemed to be something of a pioneer of a slasher film genre, which showed in both the good and the bad. It introduced a lot of good concepts that you would later see in other slasher flicks, but the movie itself felt incomplete in the story writing overall. Again, you could definitely tell it was back when the slasher genre was in its infancy. This movie, on the other hand, well, it has no excuse, so let's see how the remake would do. And to be fair, I can get Black Christmas getting a remake. Like I've said, the original may be a classic, but it is not there spotless. There is potential, definitely. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, are they making this silly? <laughs> I'm sorry, This is this supposed to- No, this was not a parody. <laughs> I'm mean, you sure it that was- It feels like it. Yeah, no, that shot legit felt like a parody. You. Um, 
James Rolfe, what are you doing here? <laughs> no, 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 um, no, 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 James Rolfe can't be in this movie. He doesn't have, he doesn't any have enough time. He doesn't have enough time. got time for it. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, you mentioned, okay, sorry. I was confused for a second. The, the, the writer is the same as the director, Glenn Morgan, too. Glenn Morgan, right yeah. There. It, 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 it really does look like like it's practically the same. I'm pretty sure that's like meant to I'm, be the same shirt. I'm confused shirt. because of a white suit. Uh, yeah, no, it's. It, I don't think it's a. Sh yeah, it is a shirt. Well, no, it is, sure it's it... the same shirt. No, no, don't tell. That's the same shirt he uses nowadays. Actually, he's the uh, angry prison ward. Jesus. Um. Ho, that's ho, Santa. Ho. That, Tia, that's Tia, That's Santa Claus, not Jesus. Well, that's just, in some countries, dreams that's the same thing. Believe it or not, for a long so time. Does that mean? Oh, I, 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 I know what's happened. The anti um, Kyle, uh, sorry, Stan accidentally brought on the uh, the Antichrist, so Santa has to come here with his shotgun to kill it. Yeah, it's like it's like, it's like, it's like I said. It's like I said earlier. Halloween and Christmas. If you take a certain interpretation of Santa Claus, they both have a scary guy as its figurehead. Let's see. Our protagonist is played by Caddy Cassidy. Which started also in the first Taken, the 2010s, I don't know, an Illustrated movie. Oof. So, um, I'm a bit curious. That, op TV stuff gone. that opening shot, was that supposed to be like a look ahead, or was that the first thing that happened? Uh, similar to other cases, I didn't watch this movie that much after the first time, and I was not particularly impressed by it. Alright, um, okay, there is one controversy regarding the movie that I want to address. Gone. Um... Um, the studio's decision to release this film oh, in the U.S. on uh, yes, to release on. to release this film in the U.S. on Christmas Day, it came out ten days earlier here in Britain, um, caused a bit of issues among certain Christian groups, such as Liberty Council and Operation Just Say Christmas. Um, they called the film offensive, ill-founded, and insensitive. An LA Weekly columnist by the name of Nikki Fink. Um, said of the decision and the entertainment industry wonders why it continues to have a huge pr problem as promoters of garbage showbiz marketing calls this counter programming still i don't understand just how many disturbed human beings does the weinstein company oh, and mgm yeah. think actually want to go see <laughs> a gory movie on december 20th oh yeah. my that god was right <laughs> the weinsteins are behind this so. and before you ask this was right. before people really knew the rabbit hole that was the weinstein company so holy cow is that prophetic it's funny because for a long while, for a long time, also, no, this is not Ryan Gosling, don't worry. For a long time, I, I had already ups, no, you um, know, uh, already, sorry, go on. Actually, too, I think I know who this guy is. Oh, who's the... I, I think he was in one of the early episodes of season one of House. Okay, I cannot really focus on that, sorry. You and the lives are more famous, knowledgeable on that. Anyway, <laughs> apparently uh, the guy in the... Mental Ward is this guy called Billy Lenz. Yeah, apparently... I forgot Billy was the name of the killer of the original movie. So here we actually <laughs> see Billy. It turns out uh, they exposited that he was apparently locked away in a basement or attic, apparently. In... Mm -hmm, in the attic, specifically. And he was ready. Also, if I could... we, we, we will actually get to see his backstory this time around. Go on, Chiri. Uh, Joe was still halfway through a sentence, I think. So I'm guessing that in this case he's going to escape the asylum and he'll definitely be the main antagonist. Just like in the Prom Night remake. The what now? Prom Night. It's another relatively early horror slash slasher movie. Never heard right. of that uh, one, I'll admit. The first the one is interesting, the second batshit insane, the third one is black. The remake oh yeah, is I... Stupid. The oh. mention... To mention films to try and counter what um, what uh, Nikki Fink said about their decision to release the film on Christmas, countered by saying, "There is a long tradition of releasing horror movies during the holiday season as counter programming to the more regular Yuletide fare." And Michael Gerno, of the a film historian from the Horror Review, um, also brought question to Liberty Council's complaint, saying. Such crimes occur throughout the year, including at Christmas, and cited both a mass murder and murder-suicide that occurred on Christmas Day 2005 in Virginia. 
Like, I know I complained in the original movie that everything was moving too slow. This moves too quick. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. it's well, the opposite like... problem. Want to add on another dose of controversy? Apparently, this movie was inspired by the crimes of actual serial killer Edmund Kemper when writing the film. Okay, like you'd have a you'd have like some right, uh, depending on who you are, to say that you know that's a bit insensitive in that regard. But insensitive towards Christmas as a whole, no. I feel like the Christmas thing was definitely a thing that was in its infancy in that regard, where, you know, nowadays it's a lot more normalized. Heck, even by 2006 it was normalized, but, well, maybe not as normalized by 2006, but I get the feeling that some people were still a bit iffy on the negative values of it around the Christmas season or whatnot. Like, nowadays, you know, we get a lot more stuff doing that. You also, have to remember, sorry, go on. Also, really, guard, you're falling for this? Yes, he's. Uh, he made a makeshift uh, stabby object out of a candy cane. There we go. And yes, uh, the that guy dies first. Uh, how even with a candy cane? Like it's. Not... I thought the girl with the uh, with the bag on her head died first. I don't even remember if it's a cannon death or it's just there for the. Oh, okay. So as far as we're aware, the black guy dies first. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. If I if I, if I recall correctly, this girl on the right isn't she the one we saw get stabbed first? But I don't remember. Oh no, uh, it's the that... girl in this room here. I know that in terms of casting, Lacey Chabert is in this movie, by the way. Oh, hey, oh great! <laughs> right, so, so she was in. So she was in two controversial things in the year two thousand and six, a month a month apart from the other. Oh, fair, that I, was I, her I, year. I rather take, take on the controversial that's treatment the thing. than kissing an hedgehog. Thank you. That's the, that's the thing, Dwebs. As far as I can tell, her career peaked with um, not another teen movie. <laughs> I will say this, um, I definitely get what Shiro is talking about, though. Like, this moves way, way too fast for us to be yeah, able to movie... really actually gather the info. Now, granted... Yeah, yeah, this movie, with credits included, is not even 90 minutes long. It's 1 hour and 24 minutes. Like... Yeah, I think, uh, if I recall correctly, this movie involves revenge porn. Uh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so, okay. Gross. Okay, so it seems that the girl is dead up in the attic with a bag over her head, just like in the original. Okay, good, well, fine. But, man, the chronology is really off. So that means that we started at the point where she gets stabbed, which I guess has to take place after the point where Billy escapes from the asylum and goes here for... Uh, some reason. My... To be fair, I can tell you this already, Jova. The movie will provide an actual better explanation of what's going on, and it will all make sense by the end. I can assure you that it will be more satisfying than what the original did. That, okay, you know what? That there is fine, but I will say this. Even if you're setting up a mystery, confusing your audience to the degree that this movie at start is confusing us is not always the best solution. Now granted, maybe it will have a good payoff as to why they show the events in this case, but there are also a lot of times where you think it's going to lead to something, but it turns out it's just the writer being pretentious. <laughs> Beyond Two Souls! Alright, any more trivia we can give regarding the movie since, um... Who's the composer, how, just to know? Considering the pacing, will I even have time to say it? Um, but yeah, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned earlier, this is the last film oh, that right, Shirley Walker mentioned. composed for before she she died a few weeks before the movie came out. Now, yeah, speaking of cuts, is there any reason cut. why there was an American cut and a European cut, and why the European... As far as I know, not that I know, co considering um, their behavior, I, have, I, I can generally word. believe... Sorry? I have one word. What? What? 
Weinstein. Yeah, I was about to say, I genuinely can't believe it was a decision from the Weinsteins. Uh, like I'd like to remind you, these are the same people who thought it was a great idea to make a gag that out of a Dougal movie. Well, it was on called Dougal originally, it was called The Magic Roundabout. Yeah. Like here, and here's the weird thing, the original cut, well at least the first cut that was released was the European one in the United Kingdom, and yet the, and yet, get this, the actual North American cut huh. is actually longer, so like is the North American- It has a different ending, yeah. Oh god, these cuts. Jesus, these cuts. No look, Shira, please. Wait, 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 wait. The ending for the Magic Roundabout in the US version has a different ending? No, no, no. no, no. I'm talking movie. about this movie. Oh, okay. I was like, what did you do? Essentially, <laughs> the difference, the difference uh, between the European cut and the American cut is that the, the ending is completely different. It has the same vibe, but it's, it's composed differently. That explains why at the end of the last commentary you said European copy specifically, because we never really do that. It's still, okay, it's still, I don't, I don't know actually if the Blu-ray contains both endings and you can choose which one to do it. I hope so, uh, because that's, it, that's as stupid as, you know, the, um, uh, the sequel to, um, God, uh, Unfriended, you know, that also does the, the multiple ending gimmicks of a Dean Theater. Okay, so curious. Um, you're okay. So when you say that there's two different endings, you're talking about this movie, right? Yes. So in that case, though, how different could the endings be, and like, should we be aware? No, we we can't. Oh, Jesus Christ! We can't really do what, what we did with the blade, uh, with Blade Trinity. I will just have to describe you what happens in the other one. Fair enough. Um, so. So I'm going to take a guess and say that there are actually two killers, because otherwise this doesn't make any sense why Billy's here, but the killing Or maybe we're putting a Frank Miller in the events of Thor out of order. Oh, how... <laughs> wait, 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 I wait, wait. That. Why did he leave his arm clearly hanging out of the bag? Like, I know that that looks gruesome. Because the audience needs to understand. It was not clear enough that he, there's, a, there's a body in the bag, Drova. Oh we my... need an, an extra shot for that, apparently. Oh my god, this movie is on speed. Like, it's only 15 minutes and we've already had, like, four murders. I was going to mention, um, the movie's bad reviews and not very good box office. Uh, let, me just, let me just check it real quick. Um, on a budget of um, $9 million, it made $21 million, which uh, there have been many, many more better cheap Halloween movies. Technically that, successful cheap, cheap by the standards of the time, money. but yeah, no, still not that much. Also, remember, dude, this fact, is a was... Christmas movie, not a Halloween movie. It's got horror in it. In fact, yeah, it was so lackluster, the Christmas horror genre practically died for until a decade Krampus, yes, until so. Krampus came out. And then the other remake of Black Christmas killed it again. Good gracious. Fucking hell. And the thing is, though, I mean, technically, a 21.5 million box office off of a $9 million budget is a success, but I'm guessing that there were extra marketing costs that we don't also, know about. Also, at the cost of sounding like a broken record and cynical, I can't believe the Weinsteins will not, will have not considered it success well, successfully enough. I might have an answer for that, actually. Um, okay. Um, the trailers for the movie actually had footage shot specially for them. Because the producers didn't think the film was marketable enough. Needless to say, Glenn Morgan wasn't happy. Yeah, uh, I can believe that. Too. Also, I've looked into info and yeah, Dwibs is right. Harvey Weinstein demanded that the film's original ending be altered and had additional footage shot for television spots, which I guess is the North American cut overall which has the extended stuff all right now we're learning actually the backstory of billy and i had to warn already in advance mostly for sure but for those who can be squeamish this involves a lot of eye gouging so your warning and believe mm -hmm. it or not well i'm not off to read be, in a, not, be back in a bit <laughs> that's not even the worst thing that happens because like he said this will be it's a be try hard in wanting to be edgy, so... Oh, oh wait, wait, just, wait. Be, just be prepared. Okay, assuming the killer at the sorority is Billy, maybe the, maybe the fact that he gouged out that blonde girl's eye is supposed to be a sign of his past trauma and how he did it to his mother's revenge and now he does it to just all wait, his just victims. Wait this lady does not like Christmas, huh? Oh, let me guess, his mother... He's very green, she... Oh god, are we about to get a mixture of the Grinch and the Penguins backstory? 
sugar cookies. Okay, even okay, taking aside the atrocious um, stuff Harvey was Harvey did, um, even by this point, why would anyone want to work with? I, I'm surprised people even wanted to go anywhere near the Weinstein's even by this point, considering their reputation for wrecking movies because they thought they were they thought they were artists. Okay, mm. granted, I'm not the biggest follower of Weinstein Company history before the controversy. The company so... of Miramax mostly drove out, you know. They ah. were the ones who did a lot of alteration for the dub of Kiki Diddy Service and wanted to do even more for Princess Mononoke to the point where, uh, you know, Studio Ghibli sent a creator Katana, you know, we written on it, no cuts. Um, they were the one who fucked over the, um, the, the um, what's the name of the movie? Oh, um, the thief and the cobbler. The thief and the cobbler. Yes, um, they promoted garbage like Shall We Dance. No, I still don't consider it really a good movie. The... Fight me. Um, <laughs> so in general, I already had a syn you know syncretic relationship with the logo of the company, and it was even before knowing about what Weinstein did. So it was more of a case of oh, figures. Okay, you know? question, question. Like um. That's the bad. What was the good of the company? I mean, like, they must have done some good to have actually been in business. Do you like the movie Chicago, Drova? Never saw that one. It's a musical with Richard Gere that tap dances, I think. Okay, what were other well-received stuff that they put out? Not, not, I, on top of my head, I can't remember right now, but I'm pretty sure that by also probability, there are a few. They must have, because normally a studio that only releases crap well, okay, by that point, they had to have done at least enough good stuff to be sticking around as long as the Weinstein Company oh. did. So yeah, uh, let's start Let's start a bit also with the extra edge by... <sighs> Pause of Abuser. What a lovely... I get, I get the idea, you know, Billy traumatized yeah. childhood and everything, so that's part of the course. But trust me, it gets worse. Wait, wait, and yeah, on. I know, and yes, and yes, I know, a horror movie showing horrible things is something you'd expect, but... Um, it is still possible to have horror films with gratuitous stuff in them. Wait, hold on. There you on. go, that's how Billy learned his technique. So his mother was a murderer? Mm-hmm. Huh. He murdered his father. And it, it almost sounded like she raped his father, too, based off of those sounds, too. Oh, don't worry, Jova. The rape is not for his father. Huh, so a rape story where the female is the... Perpetrator. What year was Thursday? Just to know again, Dwebs. I forgot. Thursday film. Uh, 1998. Oh, I see. She murdered his original father so that this guy could take so his she dad's could place. she could remarry, yes. And yeah, this movie has some some minor clever kind of things, like the shot of the eye that wants to be homage to the original. So in some way, you can definitely tell that, you know, the director did his own work, and as he mentioned, uh, showcase also some footage, uh, he did work with the director of the original movie, you know, um, on set. And you can tell that he wanted to be respectful to the original, but unfortunately, but I'm sorry to say, the try-hard element, which you're really starting to see very soon, you know, kind of overtakes that. Again, it's, I do wonder if it's probably just because, you know, it was done in that particular era, and as such, he was a victim of that. Ironically, now kind of like how the 2019 movie is. I will um, say in that. In its own way. Sorry. But gone. I will say that while the Weinsteins probably did mess up stuff with this movie, I do get the semblance that the movie at base wasn't exactly the best movie to begin with, based Let off me put of it how this way. is going. They could have, they could have said no or tell to do better, and they didn't. So at the very, at the very least, a part of the blame I won't still give on them. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, no, no, don't get me wrong. Like you know, the stuff that the Weinsteins did mess up, they did mess up. But what I'm saying is I'm not going to act like the directors and writers He's were innocent little sure, lambs sure, sure. in this Don't whole worry, thing. I understand. Uh, question. Yeah, what... we're, we're, we're doing the, the call again. Gone. Oh, let me guess. We're going back and forth between history. And let me guess. Billy's old house is where the sorority house is now. Yep. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. 
So Halloween took inspiration from Black Christmas, only for the remake to take inspiration from Halloween later on. Huh. Time really is a flat circle. Yeah. Whoa! They immediately jumped to calling the police in this version. Nice. <laughs> Also, also, I, I, I mean, we, cannot... we didn't mention the cast a whole lot, have we? I mentioned only the protagonist and Lady Chabert. Well, I have to be honest, I cannot recognize her between these people. I will say this. Well, I do like we're, that we're getting info on Billy. Am I the one who feels like that maybe they kind of spoil their load a little early with giving us the info on him? Like, it's... Oh, we're not done. Don't worry. Like, I mean, yeah, giving the info later I could get, but giving it this early kind of takes away the mystery of the killer, I feel. Especially if you know someone's familiar with the original film, which, okay, to be fair, most people might not have been at this point, but okay, all the I, same. I, I didn't know about this. Apparently, uh, Lady Chabert got to voice Supergirl in the Harley Quinn series. Uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> ah, neat. Also, who is this girl? So yeah, we've also got um, Katie Cassidy, mainly known for um, being, well, well, screen queen in, in her early days. Um, and then she ended up being in um, um, in the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. And also, she played characters in the Arrowverse. Hey guys, it's the unicorn statue, like in the original. Also, not only yeah, that, but... Like... if. I guess since there's caller ID, of course they already figure out that the call came from Clara Crosby, which means, isn't this our house? Also, yes, Mary Elizabeth Winston is also in this movie. So is this girl supposed to be like a stand-in for the crazy boy from the original film or something? Like Peter? Not really. I don't think there's anyone that's st just standing for him. Funnily enough, i well... The, the film, her film debut was only a year before. It was the unrated version oh. of um, The Ring 2. Yeah, about this. Um... Oh, God. Why? She... Oh. She's li they're literally copulating on top of the stairs. Uh, get a room. Okay. There's, a, there's this weird thing that every time I go to my dad's house and I pick a movie for us to watch, there's always a gratuitous sex scene in it. And yeah, why does Billy... that, that's such a specific curse. Like, why does that happen? All right, here we go. Billy was kept in the attic. Uh oh, uh, I think I've heard of this bit. Yeah, you. Whatever you're thinking, yes, it's that and worse. Oh. No. Let's, let's add to Billy backstory the fact that because his mother could not actually copulate well with his, you know, uh, with uh, her new husband. Uh, yeah, I I'm gonna need a shower after yeah. this movie. I'll, I'll take the eye gouging for this. Oh, oh my god. Okay, so Don't you see, guys, oh, yeah. we're so much more risque with okay. this. It's more horror. All right, okay, okay, yes, um... she bit a child with from that. Okay. okay. This is a horror movie. Uh, okay. I, okay. I regret so much not having alcohol for tonight. Teo, is this right, I'm American, getting my alcohol. I'll be right back. Is this yes, in the American yes, cut? Sir. Yes, sir. I'm surprised because... I'm, I, I, like, how did... Was there any controversy surrounding this scene? Because I don't remember... He not people particularly. People complained about how offensive it was for reviews, Christmas and not reviews, this shit. I can tell you that the reviews about this do not really, you know, uh, well, bypass that. They, act, they actually, actually speak, but we actually talk about it. Uh, oh, well, actually, 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 never mind, Shiroi. Uh, for whatever reason, the internet didn't go in, into apeshit mode when Breaking Dawn Part 1 came out, so I guess it's just one of those cases where some of them... Yeah, the, the imprinting on a baby was fine, okay. so I guess people let this pass, too. Okay, okay, okay. One thing to keep in mind, Breaking Dawn was... Definitely still before the internet had grown to the power of cancellation yet. Like, I assure you, had, I'm pretty sure if Breaking Dawn had been released more recently, that movie would have been cancelled seven ways to Sunday. Well, also, uh, people still do not uh, hold accountable calling Trevorrow for what he did in Book of Angry. What chance do we have? Actually, I have, 
Uh, well, okay, the thing is, nobody really saw Book of Henry, though. Yeah, there's that too, too, let's face it. <laughs> like, Book of Henry is pretty much like this mysterious wanderer that is so obscure, despite being Colin Trevorrow's baby and all that. Also, yeah. you might have noticed another thing. Unfortunately, at least for this first half, uh, they, they do pick up a bit in the second half, but for the first half, the sorority members really, really do not have much of a personality. I guess it's just show off their character more, yo, so we care about them when they die. Yeah, drink, I wish I had drink, alcohol. Drink. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Okay, going back to that unfortunate scene. Okay, despite some stereotypes here, no, like, America will not always censor everything. Like, there are some things, but honestly, though, given that this was probably, I'm guessing, an R-rated flick, it would have been, hey, just... Clearly don't show this to kids and all, and whatevs in that regard. So, I'm not too I surprised guess. that... I mean, this is R-rated fact. to begin with, so, you know... And to yeah. be fair, a lot of horror movies have involved raping would definitely either create and again, or motivate the killer. My problem is not the fact that they're actually showcasing a theme like this. Uh, the problem is that you can clearly tell it's the movie essentially again trying too hard in order to uh to see oh look how you know messed up the the backstory of billy is this time around in the original you didn't even know much but here look at how you know uh handful it is it's kind of like what rob zombie did with his own halloween movie he took a concept that was perfectly you know um intuable in the original and just you know, put up more and more of, you know, fucked up stuff just because he thought that, you know, the audience needed to know more. And, you know, it's Wait. not a case of the thing itself. It's just, you know, we didn't need it. Wait, oh my god, Tio. So, does this mean that Halloween took inspiration from the original Black Christmas for the first remake of Last Christmas to take inspiration from the original Halloween, only for the remake of Halloween to take no, inspiration Rob from Zombie the remake mostly, of Black Christmas? Rob, Rob Zombie <laughs> mostly recycled the uh, concept that he had for the movie that he did, The, the Devil's Rejects, yeah. which I think was in the mid-2002. I mean, I'm mainly also, joking, but it's an interesting <laughs> pattern when you think about it. But I, Again, I, again, like, when the, the rape scene uh, in... The rape scene in, in Clockwork Orange uh, is not just there for shock value. Like, guys, like, uh, give it this thing a purpose. Uh, Jovok, I'm curious. What? Okay, uh, about your explanations about stuff like Book of Henry and Breaking Down Power. Okay, fine. How does that? How do you explain uh, Wonder Woman 1984 then? Uh, because actually, a lot. It. Actually, a lot of people were calling that out on Twitter. Like, you remember the whole Justice for Nick handsome guy was man. true well, yeah for handsome, handsome man, man was literally a trending thing so and these days the movie is not even that remember fondly anyway. my See, and keep my in mind that also that... that wonder woman 1984 tanked in all regards so that movie got what was coming to it for that Anyway, to mention the name of the actor things Peter was questioning, uh, Kyle here is played by Oliver Hudson, and no, apparently he was not in House, Pedro. Okay, he was in Dawson's Creek, though, I guess. He was in right, engagement. All right. Also, Grown Ups too. Oh, fuck me. All right, then. All right, so, okay. So, if I can get a semblance of what's going on here, like, we've already... Billy has returned home. Yeah, definitely. Oh, wait, no, we're in 1991. No, no, Billy has returned home in the meantime. We saw his POV. Um, but we're we're seeing more of his backstory now, and I think it's now that it's about to happen. Be good for goodness sake. Hey, uh, what oh else is gonna happen? So let me guess. He goes berserk, kills his mom, and uh, does he kill the brother too, or whatever sibling he got? It feels a lot like the writers don't feel confident in their material, so they have to resort to shock value in order to get a rise out of you. <laughs> well, writer, yeah, pretty and much. it's the same as the director, so this, this is literally only one person to hold accountable for this. Uh, at oh, least as far as we like, know. Um, like the previous movie, uh, this film was um, made in uh, Canada, specifically Vancouver. I don't think they still mention what, what city this is supposed to be, but like in the original, it doesn't really matter. 
I'm not gonna. I, I know. I know it's easy considering the scene we had earlier, but I am not going to make an Alabama joke. <laughs> Leaves Alabama is a southern <laughs> state. Does it? Does it even snow at green winter in there, Drover? Uh, it can Possible. sometimes, I mean, not Texas. often. Not often, though. So yeah, the products of the, the wonders of labor um, is a daughter that has now grown up a bit. Oh, okay. So it was a girl, actually. So his... yeah. Sorry, every, every time I see the book, every time every... it's, it's a girl. <laughs> Also, you know what's funny? I remember one of the Three Hours of Horror episode of The Simpsons done before this movie, but had the whole sibling, uh, you know, um, in the Arctic story better, you know, complete with a twist ending. Hmm. Ew. Jesus uh, Christ. Is she implying uh, that she wants to make love to her daughter, too? Jesus. Sure, like why not? Said, okay. Like I wouldn't put it past this. Uh, okay, this okay, 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 okay. Ugh. Let me just make one thing clear. I don't mind that they actually went this route again. We've seen very <sighs> reprehensible All stuff. All right, Now a good time. Yeah, Jova, finish your explanation. <laughs> We've seen very reprehensible stuff in horror films. Like, heck, don't even get me started on how Freddy Krueger's birth was, essentially. So, like, no, like... The problem isn't that they're going to all these links. By all means, reprehensible parent, and she's probably going to get what's coming in that regard. And this is an interesting way to show why Billy would have his psychosis. It's just that the way the movie has been presented feels very slapdash, and as a result, kind of makes a lot of this feel like it's just rushed in, checkboxed to shock value. Yep. Yeah, pretty I mean, much what pay. Uh, funnily, funnily okay. enough, actually, um, funnily enough, actually, I actually, I, I looked into this actress's CV, Karen Conoval. I actually recognised her. She was in the um, the recent Planet of the Apes trilogy as Maurice. Uh, it's a good thing that the for um. Is she right? It's a, it's okay. Season three uh, premieres today, so. For I'm what? Covered. Chucky. Chuck. The Chuck. Yay. Story. And yeah, oh. Billy replicated a bit the trick that his mother did and took one eye out of his sister daughter and ate it. Then uh, gouged the one of his stepfather. What is with this guy's fascination for eyes? You're... And he, strangled he... his mother with, uh, you know, Christmas decorations. He took after you know his those... mother, apparently. You know oh, but we're character... not done yet, mind you. Oh, but Tia, you know those characters in Hunter x Hunter? Who try and uh, take times on, one of yeah, so. one of the uh, main characters' um, tribes' eyes? They should have mm -hmm. hired this guy. He he, he kept them in a minute. Okay. I like the idea of violence happening with quiet music in the background. In this yeah. case, you know the the Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. Now what he does is, oh god, um... he literally prepares cookie with the flesh of his mother's. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Someone yeah. really likes Mrs. Lovett. All right, all right. He really didn't need, didn't wasn't even a cannibal in the original. Like yeah. he really wanted to up the ante in this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is where I have to raise an issue here. Like, okay, the eye thing is a thing, fair and fine, but. All of a sudden, cannibalism? Why? Okay, uh, two things. Um, one, can I come back to the movie yes, now? Sir. Yeah. Okay, and two, you have an entire body to work with. Like, you can leave the eyes alone. Mutilate any other part you want. Just leave those alone. <laughs> okay, if... if, if... To be fair, it is admittedly a weak spot. Even the, the fucking Kino Mars manga mentions that. And also, if I'm going to lighten the mood... Shit. Oh, sorry, Jova. No, go on, Shuri. If I'm going to lighten the mood a little bit, if you're going to take people's eyes out and make cookies with their flesh, you could at least make biblically accurate angel eye cookies. Come on, yes. please. But like, Shuri, just do nice. that. But Shuri, cookies and cream deserve love, like everything else. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Hey, 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 Shuri, I just found, uh, we were talking about Chucky earlier. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a great line from, from that series to for win. Mommy's working up uh, away my list. Pretty fucking good. Yeah, that's how, that's how I feel about this mother. <laughs> so yeah, Agnes, wow. was, the, yeah, Agnes the little girl, was sent to a psychiatric ward, uh, a different one than Billy. 
to, with the hope of that they could be rehabilitated in the future. And that's our backstory. Huh, okay, yeah, so... Uh... It... Oh no, Joseph is stunned! <laughs> Wait, hold on. So, one question, how do you know all this? It's known. Again, it's because he was at their guess. home. Serial killer enthusiast. So, in that case, clearly what we should do is maybe vacate this house that is clearly his, call the police, and go somewhere safer. Especially if you know, if you know, the stories of the old residents of this house. Like, I'll just say this, if they don't exit as soon as they find the bodies, then I'm calling bullcrap. Eh? Was that supposed to be a big shock with her turning um, around? Not that I remember, to be honest. Oh, um, okay. I thought, I thought, with the dramatic music building up, I thought it was gonna be like, when, when it climaxes, I thought it was just gonna get a gun out and shoot him. Like, yeah, what was with the scare cord and Lay's sister showing up? I mean, sorry, Claire's sister. Let me check. Oh, she's playing by him. But yeah, again, I guess some changes will have to be made given the uptick in technology now. Yeah, obviously. Oh, great! You're one of those edgy remakes that likes to swear like a storm to act adult. That actually hasn't been a lot of swearing in this movie, I don't think. True, true, true. I guess it's mainly I think just... it's just like this one character or this one scene, I don't know. Fair enough, maybe it's just the one character. I just tend to go on that reflex because a lot of horror films really overplay it, but no, you're right. We actually haven't had that much swearing up to this point. I to be will... fair, like, it, it, it boils down on the writing. Like, for example, like, okay, do you, would you really want Chucky to stop swearing, for example? Like, oh, like uh, I said. Well, how it's well done. Well, I think that goes without saying, honestly. Like, when I say a movie that just swears wantonly to come off as adult, that usually means it's like one that does it badly. Eh? Oh, Billy. Naughty Billy's boy. Billy's still Tom Peeper. So that being said, though, like, I guess there, again, I still do wonder if there are two killers, since, again, like, for Billy to have been doing all the killing while intertwining those scenes in the asylum, I don't see the point and purpose to them showing those things out of order, unless they're trying to trip us up. I'm just glad my, I'm just glad my snacks today don't involve, don't involve cookies. Also, I'm sorry, but Miss McHenry isn't nearly as entertaining as she was in the original movie. Bring back the drunkard crazy cat lady! Hey, it's a telescope. But it's not! It's a doll! Ooh. Wait, but that's uh... Agnes's doll! What does it mean? Also, Eyeball as the screensaver? What the fuck? Uh, coincidence? <sighs> look, 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 okay. I want to try and be fair to this movie, and look, by no means am I going to go like, oh, this movie pales in comparison to the original, because for as much a classic as the original was, I'm not going to act like the original was this bold, spotless classic that no one should dare sully the reputation of. Uh, that being said, I'm not gonna act like this remake is absolutely doing the original any favors in reputation, though. Like, I, okay, aside from the squicky stuff, I haven't really noticed anything overtly offensive to this, at least in regards to it disrespecting the original, but man, does this movie just feel like your typical horror film without a lot of the plot to sustain it. Now, no oh, eyes. now to give him credit, yes, they gave Billy more of a backstory and more of a definitive character, so that is an improvement from the original. I do wish that they maybe could have told it in a better manner, but okay, we have pretty much the backstory now, so we also have the killer. Merry Christmas. Bye, humbug. 
You know, you know what, um, you know what more traditional Christmas films have been missing? What? Like take um, take Christmas Carol for example. You know what that really needed to get across that Scrooge McDuck was screwing up people's lives. Yes. What? If Tiny Tim, if if the if Tiny Tim's family was so poor, he had to gouge his eyes out and sell them to make money. Oh. Yeah, this is what this, this I think is a good parallel. The idea that you know we need to add unnecessary angst to the to the back. <laughs> oh, guys, flying eyeballs. Guys, I that before, anyway. oh guys, you're gonna love this. There's actually a very dark and edgy Christmas Carol miniseries where I was get, kidding. Where get this? Apparently, <laughs> Scrooge was sexually abused by his teacher in the past. Uh. Mm -hmm. Are all of these like remakes or versions or whatever just adding Honestly, rape in the yeah, past I'm, for I'm like? Surprised, I'm surprised that a uh, horror movie based on Winnie the Pooh didn't do that. Oh, yet. fun! Like, I'd like to remind you that the the 2010s, uh, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street remake uh, wanted to specifically emphasize the fact that Freddy Krueger was a child molester, while no, at no point in the original series was outright stated. Implied, sure, but never actually stated. Uh, uh, um, you think, oh. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. First, basically, the Christmas Carol TV series that I'm referring to was the 2019 British drug drama series miniseries, including classics like Guy Pearce, Andy Serkis, Stephen Graham, Charlotte Riley, John Harris, Jason Fleming, Bennett Robinson, and Joe Allen. The drama includes, and I'm not kidding here. <clears throat> Adult language, brief nudity, horror elements, and implications of forced prostitution, child molestation, and a depiction of children drowning. Hooray. Mm -hmm. Just what Christmas County is. Yes, Pedro? Uh, you know, there's at this point, like, your predictions in the Life is Strange playthroughs, now your prediction, and, you're, and you constantly react to the exact same sentence, I was kidding! Because I don't uh, think I get, people I, I will be that, that creatively no, bankrupt. I, I know, I know, I know. That's the feedbacks. I get the feeling. I, I get the feeling it's something similar to Kojima, where every time something in real life happens that was in Metal Gear, Kojima's probably like, "I was just writing a story." Like the bus. Honestly, honestly, <laughs> honestly, compared to that, I'm just glad that my predictions of something bad happening are confined to fiction. Yeah. Like, the true. thing is, the thing is, the reason they made the Christmas Carol that way was supposedly to make it more realistic. Like, by the end, apparently, Scrooge doesn't even really want forgiveness. He feels that he doesn't deserve forgiveness. It's too late for and, him, and all anyway, that. Anyway, just to mention quickly, that scene that we just saw, the guy, you know, being, uh, you know, moved away because, you know, uh, get thrown out of a house because, you know, it was kind of a jackass, uh, you know, about it. Uh, that scene will have an equivalent in the 2019 movie, just with more Twitter arguments on it. Joy. Okay, I will say this. Whereas the first third of this movie felt like it was rushing, am I the one who feels like now the movie's slowed down a bit? Like, noticeably? Mm -hmm. To be fair, we're almost... Okay, we're past the halfway through, not yet to the two-third mark, but... Uh... Yeah. Now I'm not it's saying that. Not like I'm spending a, a dark Christmas with the Mean Girls. And I'll say this. I'll say this. Slowing down isn't inherently bad, but I mean, like it slowed down to like to the point of nothing's happening. Crawl sorts. Like Jesus, you go from one extreme to the other. Movie. Like I'll say this again. While I haven't seen the remake of the 2019 film, I do know the damage that that movie did, and I just gotta say this, unless this movie turns out to somehow be incredible, the Black Christmas franchise seems... I don't cursed, wanna say... Yeah, yeah, cursed. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to... I wanted to try and go in soft, but no, to even Tia saying it, I'll say it. Black Christmas feels a bit cursed. Again, a mo the original was a classic, but... Again, was definitely an early film of the genre, so yeah, it it was pretty much a slasher film without the uh, renovations that would make later slasher films much better. This movie, so far, seems to just be a cluttered mess that, while it does take steps to legit improve certain things... Well... Bye. Billy is literally in your walls. Again, we ramp up a bit to the idea that Billy can actually see every, you know, pe people in front of everyone else. And again, to be fair, we showcase before we showcase later. The cool trick is that 
really as little liter can manage to move uh, in the in between the stuff behind walls and floors, uh, you know. Um, and actually, in there, the movie will try to have a bit of a claustrophobic element to it because of that. Uh, so at the very least, uh, they yeah. try to go for a more tense angle. Of course, also because mid two thousand, you know, um, rather gratuitous nudity. To be fair, even nowadays, some horror films have that nudity. I think they have, they have better excuses for it. Uh, fair enough. I mean, hmm. It's like if David Cage, again, uh, you know, made a horror game. Again, this is one of those things that. Actually, uh, go on. Yeah, sorry. Go. On. No, go. On, I'll mention later. Like like I said, Theo, this was one of the big things back in the '90s. Where, well, I know this is not the '90s, but see my point. Like back in the '90s, when porn wasn't as easily accessible to teenagers uh, as it is now, we uh, sneaked into a lot of these movies because there were a big chance we could see boobs. And I guess to be but fair, now... even by the mid 2000s, you know, the internet was not as fast in downloading porn as it is now. So, um, well, I get well, the downloading speed, Jova. I guess you could be right when it comes to actually finding it. No, by this point, it was very easy. Oh, I can tell that. I, oh, very I can much. Imagine it took a while to just to get a single image. Oh, that's that. oh, that's why I'm talking about like strictly the downloading. Like, no, actually finding porn on the internet was. <laughs> Very much a possibility. And they still will raise an argument, you know, that, you know, there, there, a good competent enough director can actually make a good sex scene that can surpass in terms of quality stuff that you find on the internet, but uh, still. Um, what I was saying is that uh, I think this movie is a good representation. What if David Cage uh, that made, was supposed to make, uh, uh, you know, Until Dawn? Instead of, you know, Super, uh, super That giant. movie ended up being about as stupid as this one, actually. And this one's pretty stupid. I mean, think, I mean, think about it. Uh, think about it, Teo. Suddenly throwing an incredibly uncomfortable subject matter for no good reason. That's Guys. something David Cage would do. So. Guys, I just realized we're well what? past mm -hmm. the halfway point of this movie already. And weirdly enough, despite the rush nature at first, it does, once again, does not feel like much has happened. Again, to me, this just comes across as the mean girls in a horror movie. <laughs> that's uh, that's because Jova, it's uh, you know, it's it's gonna ramp up towards the end instead. It's it wants to have uh, you know the beginning, the intense beginning, the the intense ending, and the more quiet in between stuff. Burr, Santa, Red Santa. Santa. What? Santa, on, you got on. you got sunburned, Jesus. Hey, Uncle, this isn't. I know, this isn't in keeping with the how the events have gone so far. Santa still has his eyes. That was, uh, that's because those were the eyes of a doll, uh, the same ones that Billy, uh, you know, took out uh, in that. Hey guys, hey guys, what's, what was Billy's favorite uh, food as a child? Ice cream. Uh, Ice cream. Uh, very fun, very <laughs> original <laughs> dweebs. Uh. Well, I guess the, um, well, I guess, I guess, I guess the eyes have it for that joke. Shut up. I mean, granted, oh. I mean, granted, it's pretty much on the same caliber with this movie. Now, on the one hand, the icing is interesting and on. Wait a minute, hold on. For a figure that's supposed to be Billy, that assailant has pretty long hair. Ow. Maybe it was maybe it's a disguise. I could have sworn he didn't and have one. And there's our major kill from the girls. Uh... Uh, which one was that again? I sadly don't know. I, like he said, that's one of the problems of this movie, like he said, because the personalities of them kind of can be a bit interchangeable, I don't really recognize whose actor or <gasps> actress is supposed to be, if it's Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Lacey Chabert, or anyone else. I think the Shameless. blonde... I think the blonde is supposed to be our protagonist, you know, Kate, Kate Cassidy, Katie Cassidy. Shame, it's a shame this movie doesn't take place in Britain. I could have made a... Um... Could have made a uh, school pupils joke. Oh right! Around here, students are called pupils in in like the lower ends of schools. All right. Well, apparently, they... go on. Apparently, this movie specifies that we're at Clement University in New Hampshire this time, whereas in the original enough, it's just wherever. A city. Although, like, although I shooting did take place in Vancouver, so ironically, whereas in the original movie it was Canada preparing to be America. We are once again using Canada to simulate America. 
Also, she literally, was, she literally was climbing that ladder with high heels. Uh, that's so stupid. Uh, well, can you climb a ladder in high heels? No, and, and I'm pretty sure I could not even outrun a T-Rex with that. Uh, I probably could. Remember, sure. well, remember, I'd love to, to see you try, actually. Remember, Jova, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> Okay, so apparently the girl that was killed was Dana Lacey Chabert's character, but yeah, I think God, Tio... I really did not recognize her. I think Tio raises a good point, though, and like, well, yeah, the personalities of the girls feel way more interchangeable in this regard, to the point where it's just, oh, this girl died, now this mean girl died. Well, that ain't good. And also, yeah, the music, um... Yeah, it's definitely Shirley Walker. I'm half expecting the Batman theme to play at any minute. Also, it's definitely better than the original because the original went for a more minimalistic kind of score. But, uh, gone. Oh, gee, I wonder what she's doing sleeping in her ah! car. Oh, it looks like she got ahead of the situation. The now who's gone. making jokes referring to the body. Hey, hey the, Libs, the, I the, never the, chastised the, you for it. Also, it's the, the, the 2019's Hellboy when we made a joke about that. Also, and no! He did, did the whole quit while you're ahead. Joke. Also, oh, Elise man. can't be dead. That means the flames of disaster will erupt. Yeah, the, if that makes the movie end sooner, sure. I don't mind. I was but... crying that did that. Okay. Also, that older woman, I swear I saw her somewhere else. I think it might be my, my big fat Greek wedding, but I don't recognize the actress. This, this woman. Of course it is. Even Hello? Okay, okay, look. Regardless of whether or not it's, you know, suffering difficulties, why the hell are you not all vacating the premises and getting the hell out of there? It's not even too much of a storm outside, to be honest. So. Oh, apparently Miss McHenry like knows snow. Billy. What? I'm sorry, how does Miss McHenry know Billy? Like, in the original, she didn't. I guess maybe she just remembers from that story, but again, okay, we the I audience. I really regret not putting alcohol this time. Like we the audience know, but why does she jump to that conclusion? All right, what other, what other? Okay, aside from X Files, what other stuff has uh, Glenn Morgan done? Final Destination Three. I'm guessing that wasn't <laughs> good. I'm not a fan of them in general, but. Uh... The, the more they progress, the, the stupider they get. He oh! Also did, he, did also, he also did a film in 2001 <gasps> called The One with Jet Li. Oh, how convenient. Trees have fallen, so the story says. <sighs> I get it. They're trying to explain why they can't escape, but this feels a lot more like telling rather than showing. But yeah, to their credit, they are pretty much figuring, let's just get the hell hey, out of here. Someone is genuinely telling them to not split up, so there's a plus. Huh? To the it's gonna turn into scream at this rate. What? 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 What logic is... We're not all here, so let's not bother leaving. Oh, and by the way, I gotta love this. Claire's sister. Claire, Claire was the first kill. So, in hindsight, this kind of makes her sister look like an idiot because we know Claire is dead, and I get it. She wants to hold out hope, but dumbass. It's kind of like in the 2014 Left Behind movie where the girl wants to actually, you know, find her brother, but we know that he's being raptured, so we know that her quest is futile. Like, I'm sorry, here's another thing, though. Do 2 plus 2, murderer in house, sister missing, sister probably dead, escape with your like, life. Like I said, this is what I mentioned, you know, why it's more logical what they did in Krampus last year, you know. Uh, the father, the two fathers actually tried to look for the daughter for a while, but after they could not find that much and one of them was injured, they promptly laid back and they did not, you know, 
uh, try again because it wasn't not worthy. So. Although, if I know my horror movie cliches, let me guess: the two girls that decide to stay behind survive. Arr, she's alive. Oh, who? And she drooled. If you forgot, that's the girl who vomited. So she t she took a shower before and went to sleep. Why was she vomiting? Did she eat something bad, or I was it like? She, I think she rejected the alcohol she was given. I think. Let me uh, guess. That. Let me guess. The two trying to escape are going to be the ones who die because they were in the wrong. Also, apparently, she already sees Shaveri is dead. Huh. Okay, so someone's in the back of the car, her right? In, her character in the movie. I always loved when one of the big marketing campaigns of the smart car was the fact was playing on this fact and saying, see, with a smart, you don't have to worry about people sneaking behind the car. <laughs> well, uh, that wasn't something I was ever really worried about in a real life setting, but you put that in your uh... ad now. <laughs> Okay, maybe, I suppose maybe one reason they're not exactly w rushing to get out, because what if Billy escapes and starts killing more innocent people? It's a rush! Sure, also, if you get a I'll, smart car, I'll you need to go home and reevaluate your life. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I will take that over a Tesla. I mean, wow, well, no, I think, I think that's nowadays, fire there. I think nowadays are a much even nowadays are a much better um they're much better electric cars to have. And yeah, Billy managed to do all of his shit just to murder that poor girl inside the car. Oh. Well it's so. and instead she, That's she how she gets does. killed with a with an icicle on top of her. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, it's like the villain from um, from the first Ice Age movie. Okay, 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 okay. Like, I get that that's probably to reference how she got hooked through the head in the original, but It's kind of like really? what happened in Child's Play 3, where the guy died, was supposed to be killed from Chucky, but dies from an art attack, and even Chucky's like, seriously, man? <laughs> I don't get to have any fun in this horror movie. <laughs> man, like... I mean, this movie is... Whoa! Whoa. Bloody hell. Mmm, raspberry jam, ah, tasty. <laughs> like, okay, okay, so it turns out the girls were actually right to stay behind, because, you know, they were able to get the one girl who was asleep, Again, and it turns... Like it The original had a problem with Billy, you know, uh, running away uh, all the time, you know, and uh, teleporting all over the place in, in the house. But, uh, you know, this one instead makes it even more stupid uh, in his ability to just, you know, popping up everywhere and be able to get in the car before them. I'm sorry, it's just so hard for me to keep track of which girl is who, like... I just recognize so, them by appearance as opposed to character. Yeah, uh, they're all they're all completely interchangeable because they all have the same bland girl personality. I guess the one I can diversify most is like Claire's sister because she's, I guess, the badass or something. Wait, sorry. Okay, what's the name of the girl who's in the bed? I forgot. No, she, she just said Melissa, didn't she? No, 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 no. she's asking where is girls. Melissa. Oh, you right. at question mark? Wait, oh wait, I'm guessing... No, wait, no, Melissa couldn't have been... Call me Melissa's cell phone. Do, 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 do. And then he, he, you can hear the ringtone inside the dinosaur. Do, 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 do. Jesus. <laughs> It was Kyle. How thank you, thank you, this, thank you, this Count Ryan Gosling, and mm. she's dead. With also her eyes. Wait, so out. she was, so she was killed off screen. Yep. Why? Uh, yeah. I mean, you, the, 
You know he's also the fat guy to the... If I had go early on in the movie, why are you pussy oh, now? now? You know, not, not just that, not just that, it's even arguably even worse, so, because we saw the fact that the kill happened with the unicorn statue. So basically, a kill that was in the original was replicated but off screen. That, that I think, is even more of a, you know, of a culpability. Also, for a moment, I thought we were seriously going to do the whole suspect the other male protagonist thing like in the original, even though in this case, we absolutely no, know Kyle it could not have been No, no excuse to be suspectable. This movie doesn't want me to watch it, huh? Well, well, I... You could almost I... say this movie wants to take your eyes or something. Well, <laughs> I, if it helps you, I've been watching this thing from the beginning. Uh, it's You're not really missing anything. To be honest with you. Okay, uh, all right. In, in my in, in my defense, I I picked this because it was you know same movie series. So you had and no many of us it. told you it was a bad idea, Libs. Okay, regardless though. Okay, look, I get it. You know, this is us seeing the Black Christmas series and. Well, again, I haven't seen the 2019 film, but I have heard not great things about it, so... Well, again, it, it would be more bearable on this level, on the level of violence. Uh, arguably, it even worse, because if I recall correctly, in true Bloomhouse fashion, the theatrical release was PG-13, and the unrated stuff, I think, was for the Blu-ray, I think. Um, it's more unbearable because it tries to be very provocatory with its messages, but like, all in due time. Okay, to give Blumhouse films credit, they've made a lot of great horror films, even with the PG for Team so, uh, That's literally not saying much because they, they their 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 main operandus is quantity, you know, and not they say over quality, but quantity. There is a lot of stuff, so by laws of probability, of course, there's gonna be a sizable percentage of good stuff. Like, okay, like, I'm gonna give them credit that most stuff I've seen of theirs has turned out to be good, so, like, their stick seems to be making really good movies on low budgets. I will agree, though, that they have had the occasional hiccup here and there, though, I'll admit, I've heard a lot more hits than good ones, so I don't want to act like they're, like, talentless acts or anything. That no, being... it's not that. It's, it's that uh, because of that, uh, there's not too much quality control over what they, they, they do. I wonder if maybe... And again, it's... It, it showcased because, you know, the 2019 Black Christmas was filmed in very little time, honestly. I wonder if maybe in that regard they just have gotten lucky that most of their films have been helmed by people who know what they're doing. I guess. Uh, it really depends. Like, again, I'll admit, I don't really know of much stinkers, although, remind me, was Unfriended 2 one of theirs? Yes. Uh... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, it, okay, I will give it this that yeah, they probably do have their fair share of stinkers. I guess it's just, it's weird, like, you know, normally when you see a, a company with that many stinkers, there's like, you usually thought it's creative bankruptness, but no, Blumhouse actually do have a fair share, like, and granted, their methods are usually trying to low budgets. Alright, let's get to the attic. See, there's nothing. He's going to get, unless, uh, he's um, gonna get know, jump scared, get though, up isn't he? Jump scares. Burr! Oh, gee, what a shock. Okay, again, though, like, we saw Billy in the mental asylum, and he clearly did not have that long hair, so... Hmm, wait a minute. Is that... Yeah, Kyle is actually managing to fight back. That... Oh, wait, yes, that's clearly uh, a woman. No, but the other killer is Agnes. I was about to say. So Agnes has actually been the one in the house the whole time. Well, Billy still returned home. It's just that they tag teamed. Really? I mean, granted, all the kills we've seen have been clearly from the long-haired assailant in the pajamas, so... I don't know when we've seen Billy do anything. Yeah, that the initial kill was clear. Yeah, I remember. There you go. Your sister's dead. Look away, here, please. No. 
what the hell? He's my family now? Wait, so you think that if you collect someone's eyes, that makes them your family? Uh, this is not Bloodborne. No. Yeah. What the hell? We cannot be granted eyes to cleanse ourselves from our beastly idiocy. This can't be a healthy diet. I don't even know what the nutritional values can eyes have. Oh, to be honest. I'm uh, not Google. googling that. That actually, that actually reminds me, uh, uh, Shiori. Uh, there was an old British TV channel in the past called. Um, oh, the girl with the glasses called... was also killed. Off screen too. Yes, it was a red herring because people made you suspect it was Agnes, but she was not. Go on, Dwayne. Yes, there's no, there was an old British TV channel called Bravo. And um, one of its one of its things that play before the programs, um, one of its one of its items when they transition from being a classical TV show channel to a to a horror slash sci fi themed channel, was to have one where it shows somebody picking eyes eyeball eyeballs out of a jar full of them. Also, get it? She's even TV channels were doing this. Thing. Uh, also, and that was back in 1997. Also, Agnes, why did you only wait until after lighting the candles to do this? You had an opportune moment to try and kill these girls. And yeah, ju just like in um, instead of 2005 House of Wax movie, um, ow, we, we also, of course, have to be the climax of that the house gets started on fire. So, because why not? So why <laughs> did Agnes become a site? Really? Remember, oh wait, Bo, that's she right. Did not she eye thanks to Billy, so luckily it's my bullshit eye. I kind of like this. Uh, yeah. it's, it's it's one of the better fake out moments. How how stupid it is. Uh. So they literally had glasses girl in just for a red herring, and not even one done as well as Peter. Honestly, no. again, uh, it feels you like can a tell check that this movie Understands what the original is. Uh, but because it has its own idea and wanted to do stuff, it just doesn't work. And here's Billy. Complete with the organ music and everything. So... Let me check who, who he's played by. So I guess... Adult Billy is voiced by Robert Mann. Why did I heard him already? So I just have a few questions. One, why is Agnes now a psychotic killer? Two, why is Billy no longer trying to kill Agnes? Three, when did they decide to work together? Four, has Agnes been in the house all along and has nobody noticed her until that point? Five, wow. why now are they just choosing to do this? Six, uh, did they coordinate his escape from prison earlier? Anyway, Robert Mann was in stuff like uh, The X-Files, uh, Stargate SG-1, uh, Supernatural, mostly TV stuff. Uh, this was one of the first things in his career. Um, as for the, uh, the actress who plays adult uh, Agnes, uh, Dean Fries. Uh, Oh my god, I think Robot Chicken parodied this per this perspective Probably. shot of, you know, one enemy force descending while the other rises. Okay, she's like recurring with the... She's likely recurring with, um, with the director because she was in also uh, the X-Files, uh, I think the same episode, and she worked on, uh, as I think, uh, um, camera operator for Final Destination 3. How have they Again, not? Like you said, the... sorry, go on. How have they not caught her already? They've had ample time. Again, I kind of like the idea that the climax is set in the places that Billy normally would use to move. You know, the in between stuff between walls, which just goes to show how these American houses are flimsy as shit in how they're constructed. Seriously, I can tell you that in my country, that shit is solid, solid rock and stone. Okay. You cannot break that. To be fair, it varies on the house. You know, then this is apparently one of the older houses. Uh, do I you need? So. Do you really need gasoline? I'm pretty sure you've already. And that wasn't even gasoline. That was paint thinner. Oh no! But it was. But but the words on the side said gasoline. Wait, it's really that easy to beat them? Just apparently. Joe, but this is a Run. movie for the mid May me 2000. You know where the movie's not over yet. True, yeah.
<laughs> so yeah, the police was called, and instead, uh, you know, our protagonist has been ho hospitalized. Let me guess. There's Sorry. still, um, there's, there's still um, a good chunk of this movie left. Although I can tell you that a lot, like, our, the credits are roughly around 10 minutes, so we're almost done, believe it or not. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so, actually, we're almost done, actually. You know, oh. I might as well ask another question. What was the main motivation for Agnes? Was it that she felt bad for her dad slash she went, brother? She went crazy, you know, she eventually went crazy and, uh, you know, accepted the ideology of her father brother it's just like okay so you bothered to give us all this backstory but you don't bother to show us the point when they apparently that's because they reserve it as a twist uh, ideally well um, uh, okay like at least maybe show a point after the twist is revealed showing how they found each other again and how they i guess put together this plan like I don't know, did she orchestrate him getting out of the mental asylum or something? No, he got away on his own wheel so, does that mean Agnes was just waiting in the house all those years until her brother came back or something? I don't know what to tell you. Let me check uh, something in the meantime. Ugh. I mean, okay. I know it may sound like I automatically hate this, but no, actually, I think it is an interesting idea. Like, you know, adding in another antagonistic force like the I, sister, I think... who starts off innocent, but then gets twisted into something terrible. evil. It's just, the execution is not working. This whole family is just fucked up. Not just that. Uh, again, to be fair, again, that's a question that I guess you can answer during the final thoughts, but just think about it for the time. Oh, being. he lived. Burnt Beach. up. Um, if this was not attached to the origin, you know, the baggage of the original, you know, and instead was his, was its own thing, what would you think about it? Well, shit, it's not the same body. How did she even? Whatever. Switch the bodies because Michael Myers did that in the, the follow up to from Halloween H two O. Drova, so... fuck you. <laughs> Wait, what year did Halloween H2O come out? Before this, so. Oh, God. You're telling me this is taking inspiration from Halloween H2O? Again, the entire excuse that happens to... I forgot what it's called. I think uh, Resurrection, I think. The the, the the entire reason that happens, uh, the sequel behind, the sequel out down after Halloween H2O, is because uh, the, they claim that Michael Myers switched these bodies. And yes, Ooh. Agnes is still alive. She is looking... Oh! And yes! Uh, and... One of our survivors also dies, and also Kyle dies, too. Everybody dies. Except this girl. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, I was gonna say, is one of the twists actually that Billy is actually still alive and he disguises himself as oh, one of all... the nurses? We already know that Billy's alive. He's on life support oh, with that... all those burns. Well, the is going to be, she, it's, it's going to be like that scene in The Godfather, where she takes the covers off, but it's a human head instead of a horse's one. So, wait, so Billy got burnt up, but why did Agnes not? Because Agnes looks clean as a whistle, honestly. Did Billy shield her with his invulnerable body? Because, of course, killers just become nigh invulnerable for some reason. I mean, again, Michael... Powers. Okay, they kind of implied the curse stuff with Michael, but here it's just... I guess she do be invulnerable. No, no, there's a reason why I got confused, but I'll mention after we're done. Oh no, I'm strictly asking, how did Agnes not get burned while Billy did? Like, they were in the They're same area. They're just that good, as lashers, I don't know what to tell you. But that's There's thing. blood in the ceiling. That's the thing, Billy did get burnt up, it's just that Agnes apparently Fucking didn't. Fucking hell. And they did, and they did, did... Really? <sighs> I hate this so much. <laughs> Hospitals uh, in movies see? are just the fucking way. <laughs> I hate this so much. Uh, I don't blame you. Hey, look! Why is there no sound? Because you can't hear it over the Christmas caroling, Dwayne. But at the very least, well, we left the, the defibrillator unit. That's a reference to the first movie, too. Well, since, well, since me and Shiro actually rewatched that movie recently, what's worse, this? Or Harry in Book of Harry somehow getting up and just leaving Ooh. the hospital and nobody even Ow. noticed. 
I don't Ow. know. Hey, we got ourselves a one-liner. Wait, that's it? That's what They're kills Agnes? Life. After all They're that? Life by this point. Really? That's Agnes' no. death? After all the fake-outs and everything? <laughs> Are you I, kidding I, I, me? Yes, yes. And, I guess yes, I and, and by the way, yeah, this is the last scene. Uh, the protagonist managing to get out of a hospital. Again, that... I get now the idea why they asked to to have more footage because yeah, by the way, the movie's over, okay. so I can start talking about it. Because the American ending, the American cut ending, has more to it. As in, Billy also pulls the, the switcher body, and the burned body is the one of Kyle. So we get uh, at first we get a reporter that talks about the the what's happening. Um, then we see a. Uh, uh, another motivated pathologist moving new corpse into the pathology, motivating a conversation on the phone, fixing himself a drink and trying to open a candy cane. He noticed some piece cringe and checked the body bag. Suddenly, Billy jumps at him and kills him. Kelly and Lay have a mm. short talk, and the nurse comes in to take Kelly away again. This was resolved. The scene was with Agnes. But what happens afterward is that Billy also starts to track down, also, you know. Kelly, and they have an extra small chase in the hospital, which culminates in her pushing Billy uh, on top from a balcony and letting him being impaled on the top of a Christmas tree. I mean, I hate to say it, but that actually sounds like a better ending than this. Wherein... It technically is better than this, but that's not really say much. It's like, do you want the turn slightly more polished or not? Like, I mean, okay, so in that case, I guess the American cut is the cut to watch instead. I mean, but yeah, like you said, even still, a hundred times zero is still zero, because... But that being said, really, you build up Agnes surviving, and she's just taken out with defibrillators. She survives a burning house just to be taken down by defibrillators, and Billy just, I guess, dies, dies actually, on yes. the bed? In the, in the original UK cut, Billy properly dies on the table. Okay, on the one hand, more conclusive ending than the original. On the other hand, though, God, what an, what an anti-climax. In, in, in the words of Kevin Sorbo, disappointed! Ooh. Yeah. So, final thoughts, Dwayne's up. It's like this movie heard people's complaints about the original, specifically the one that it was a bit slow, and decided to do, okay, you thought you know bad pacing? I'll show you bad pacing. I'm going to drive this motherfucker so fast, you you'll have time to sit down before the movie ends. And yeah, it, it moves by way too fast. You can barely get a handle on well, what, what the characters are like or what the plot's even about. Um, not to mention all the um, rather gratuitous stuff. Like, I get it, horror is supposed to be, you know, horrifying. But you, but it is still possible to have really gratuitous stuff in a horror movie. Like, um, okay, I know it's not a horror movie, but like, there was that weird, there was that gross scene from Showgirls where, you know, sexual assault just comes out of nowhere. This film's like that, but somehow worse, because it involves the villain's own mom doing the horrible deed. I mean... Why? I, I wouldn't Why? say that... I mean, I, mean, I mean, you already kind of indicated with the rest of that that he had a pretty fucked up child. There's no, there's, no, there's no need to throw in incest. Well, okay, like I said, we've seen plenty of horror films do this sort of stuff. I don't feel that that's inherently the problem. Again, I feel the problem is just with the pacing. It really just feels like it comes out of nowhere, and thus feels more like shock value than actually building up the horror of stuff. It's really, it's, it's really weird. Yeah, yeah, cause, yeah. There is a difference between horror and and shock value. I mean, it'd be like if in um, yeah, I know it's I, I know it sounds impossible, but it'd be like if in Life is Strange, uh, the first game. They decide to uh, make the dad just uh, just a flat out beater of his family or something. Chloe's again, angry. again, a better a better comparison to this is the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. You know, it's not just the fact that you know Michael Myers, uh, you know, as a child had already you know the plentiful traumas in. No, he needs to be in a hillbilly family that treats him like shit and swears all the goddamn time. 
And that felt Why is it always a quote unquote and, hillbilly family? And that because film, Rob Zombie's uh, obsessed in talking about the south, the south of the state. So. And that film, uh, that film came out one year after this, mm-hmm. only enough. Like you said, the mid two thousands were a bad. <laughs> the mid to late two thousand, you know, were a bad time for horrors in general. I will. Only s- a few actually stood out of a mix. I will say that. I actually have a bit of a soft spot for Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, the second movie in that regard. It does okay, it's do... a bit better than the first, but there's still a lot of stupidity going on. I do like what it does, interestingly enough, with the killer by the end. I won't spoil, though, because that's a yeah, yeah, yeah. for the future. But, like, I do get what you mean, though. Like, I feel like horror movies, and this is still a thing, but man, like with the, the 2000s in general, it feels like horror movies in the in the 2000s to 2010s kind of told the line between actually dark and interesting to just dark and edgy shock value or jump scares like i guess to give this movie credit it did not over rely on jump scares they had a few but at the very least they did not have musical stings to them you know if you notice that it really just happened so at the very least there's a bit more respect than all of our movies to, to, and, and to finish off the acting's fine i guess honestly the the, the best thing in this movie is uh, the music and that's mainly because it reminds me a lot of batman the animated series when i listen to it mm-hmm. but i mean hey you know it, it, i guess it shows one thing even even so near to her death shirley walker was still putting out good music yeah that's that, that's that, that's that's one positive Hurrah. Unfortunately, it's tied to this movie, which, um, at the end of the day, it's, I, I, I get what it's trying to do, but it doesn't do it well at all. Yeah, like, I mean, the ideas are there, but the execution is naff. Yeah, it's like, again, I can't, I don't know if I can even call this movie absolutely horrendous, like, again, I was definitely put off by the pacing, and yeah... But I'll admit, like, the ideas, some ideas were interesting. I can't even call this movie overtly horrendous. It's not like I found myself constantly annoyed by it. I was intrigued at times. It's just that it's about where it hinges on the end result. And the end result is, well, I'd say at best it's meh. At worst, it's just bad. All right, uh, Shiri. I'm kind of the opposite. I don't like this. And not for the reasons that you thought, kind of. It's more so the fact that, yeah, they were trying way too hard. This isn't the fun kind of 2000s edgy. Um, This is just... Yeah, it's just try hard. It's... They throw in some little references to the original movie, but... I don't know, the original movie just felt so much more thought out. Wow. I don't know. This was this was shock value for the sake of it. The pacing was a little better in this one. It wasn't great because some some uh, some parts were on high speed. It seemed like a parody at first. It definitely was not that. It was kind of horrific. Um, I don't know. Like I don't think I have much else to say about this. Um, All right, then Jova. Again, how do I put it like this? I'm not outright disgusted by this movie, aside from, you know, the obviously actual disgusting aspects of the movie, but again, I, look, if if I was to say, oh, just having this automatically makes this movie bad, I would have to pretty much just call almost, like, 50% of slashers out there bad because they tend to have pretty messed up backstory for their killers. So, Billy having this messed up a backstory isn't bad. My major issue, though, is with how it's told, essentially. Because the way it's told makes it really feel like shock value. And you're not ignoring the shock value, the chronology of stuff still doesn't make sense. So, did Billy just decide at some point I'm gonna escape and Agnes was waiting in the house all this time for him to come back, give her the signal, say, okay, sister, daughter, let's do some killing, and then they decided Basically. to? Like, Basically, yes. Yeah, so. And you know what? I know some would argue, well, they're psychopathic killers. We're not supposed to know most of the 
you know, madness because they're just that crazy. I would argue it helps to have a method to the killer's madness, especially in a slasher fic overall. And the thing is, it's just kill, 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 eye gouge, eye gouge, and apparently it's Agnes who wants to go for the eyes because supposedly taking their eyes makes them part of the family. Yeah, okay. Because despite the fact that Billy took one of hers, uh, you know, in her childhood, that's, that's some bizarre circular logic. You know, as cool as it is to make it so that there's two killers now, they kind of run into a bit of a problem. While we do get more of Billy's backstory, now we have a new killer who, I'd argue, we once again don't have enough backstory on. Like, sure, yeah, Agnes had her eye taken and went crazy, but... What connects A to B? What made her go from, oh my god, my brother slash dad, I'm guessing Billy told her he was her dad? Because otherwise, how would she know? But he regardless... probably told her in the psychiatric ward. Although, how would they have found out unless they specifically did a DNA test for that? Probably. Either way, though, like, it feels like a lack of connection in how Agnes went insane. Like, okay, sure, yeah, I can buy her going insane, but insane to the point of wanting to kill people? Like, does she feel ashamed for what she was? Does she want to make it up to Billy? It's just, oh, uh, they're all part of my family. And then she's really intent on killing them to the point of chasing them to the hospital and everything. Managing to get inside the, the walls of the hospital, mind you, which she should, not, she should really not have much knowledge about, by the way. Yeah, it's like, look, at least with Halloween, I get it. Michael wants to kill his sister because she is an extension of his past that he absolutely wants to eliminate. Fair and fine, but here... It's just, I guess they wanted to kill whatever unlucky sap was in their house because... Family? It's about family. I mean, again, again. The sad thing is, I actually am intrigued in this. And yeah, I'll give this movie credit. It gave Billy a backstory, which was something he had, like, nothing. Like, we didn't even know the killer's name actually was Billy. Yes, we did mention that, uh... Okay, I'll admit, if, the, if, like, the whole his mother abused him was an interpretation off of the phone calls from the original, okay, that's a fine enough interpretation, like, holy cow, his mother legit was a monster, and, like, honestly, him killing her would have been just fine, we did not need to go the extra step of him suddenly becoming a cannibal and wanting to eat her as cookies... Like, like you said, Job, uh, cookies love, love, we make love like everything does. Yes. Again, I feel that's part of the movie's issue. Even with its good ideas, it constantly crosses the line over into what feels like shock value, even if that's not their intent. Which, yeah, leaves us with this mess over here. The music, at least, is good. Thank you, Shirley Walker. That said, then we have the actual characters, main characters or character. Yeah, most of them are just interchangeable uh, side characters from Mean Girls. It's not even like they're all dicks, it's just party, 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 drink, 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 glug, 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 die, die, die. And like, by the end, only Kelly survives. Like, shoot, Claire's sister, Lay, who they apparently built up as a big time badass, kind of dies relatively easy in the end. It's like, oh, gotta leave it so that only one is alive, which, yeah, I guess, you know, resembles that of the remake, where, if I recall correctly, yeah, it was only just uh, the pregnant girl who uh, lived by the end. Yeah, so... I, I guess at least they forewent... Well, no, there was the implication that Billy was still alive and, you know, and went to kill her. So there is that, too. Well, okay, 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 yeah, that, um, I'm talking about strictly in, like, you know, the non-killers who survived. Yes, but, you know, it still implied that she's still gonna die. Whereas in this version, yeah, no, I guess she's good, Billy's dead, and he dies with a flat line. That's how anticlimactic it is. And unless you're, again, unless you're watching the, the North American cut. 
Although he dies in that version too, so yeah, but he has a better death scene, admittedly. You know, that... he still comes back, but he gets impaled on the on the tree. That is apparently last. Apparently last year they did release a Blu-ray that the has both cuts. cuts. Yes, I noticed that too. But yeah, no, no, you're right. Like, I guess to give him credit, I guess the American cut was overall an improvement. But again, it improves on this. Like, it's tough for me to say. On the one hand, this will give you more story than the original Black Christmas. That being said, if you consider this a better experience, it's completely up to you. Like, on the one hand, yes, the killers absolutely get what's coming to them. You get more backstory on Billy, and hey, we even get a new extra character out of it. That's fair and fine, I guess. The problem is the execution. And again, the frustrating thing is, improving on Black Christmas should not be hard. Just give Billy a proper backstory, pace the story out better, and give it a conclusive end. Which, the movie convinced, the movie accomplished two out of those three. I guess the problem really does come down to the pacing, and us just not really getting to know the characters that much well. Like, it's to a point where I don't even really know... Well, okay, yeah, sure, I was rooting for Kelly and Lay, but it's like... It's just because, you know, they're the good guys, I guess, as opposed to me legit feeling terrified for them like we did with the original, at least. Hmm. And like you mentioned, Shiroi, this is the opposite. Whereas the original felt way too slow, this goes way too fast. Even at the parts where it slows down. Oh well, it is what it is. They tried, and I can't really say they succeeded, but from what I've heard, apparently this is not the worst of the remakes. Well, that will be up to you to decide, to be honest, at the end of the day. Strictly from what I've heard, yet, but... but yeah. It, it's tough for me to say. Like, I guess, it, I guess I wouldn't be the most remiss to watch this, but I think it just speaks for the Black Christmas franchise as a whole that I don't feel in a hurry to rewatch either of the movies. For different reasons, but all the same. Tio. Sure, I'll go next. Uh, oh, this is still not good, to be honest. Uh, it's... Like you said, you can tell that uh, they they had good ideas in mind and that, uh, you know, the, there was a, an attempt to try to be respectful towards the original. But no, we're not, we're not there yet. Uh, this franchise, you know, is dragged into the mid-2000s, uh, you know, and its own set of cliches. Uh, um, in the worst way possible, trying way too hard to be to be super edgy in order to you know um, showcase how cool it is, uh, you know. Um, and like Java said, it's not so much a problem of the thematics told, but the way they are told, you know. Um, and th that brings me also to the question that he posed: If this was not attached to Black Christmas as a franchise, it was a standalone movie on its own, what? How will that be judged? And my answer would be. Um, you know, it's still try hard, but it will be mostly forgettable other than just being bad. I think the big culprit here is to try to not, in the fact that these these elements do not mention to be respectful towards what the original did, you know. It's kind of reminds me, in part of it reminds me of the difference between Spike Lee's old boy and uh, uh, the original South Korean, you know, adaptation. Um, of all of, of different circumstances, mind you. Part of me also gets reminded of the comic book uh, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash the Nightmare Warriors, uh, which uh, tries to act as a sequel to all of the franchise involved, franchises involved, uh, but uh, spoilers from, nine, from Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, brings back a character from that, uh, which is supposed to be Freddy Krueger's daughter, which was a good person in that movie, and oh. turns her into a villain with an incestual relationship with her father. Because for real, hell. yes, it's a watching Kyle's retrospective on that. It showcases how much of a bad comic it is, uh, um, especially compared to the first Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comic. Oh boy, no, it, it, again, fucked up stuff happens also in the real world, too. But there's a finesse in telling them, you know? exactly. And this movie, I think, swings and a miss big time. 
The idea of having two killers instead of one is actually pretty clever as a twist on the original formula. That one I actually like. And there are some few moments where I think the movie is trying almost close in getting there. Like the, the, the moment towards the end where the protagonist tries to, you know, eye gouge Agnes herself, but instead it's her, you know, it's the, the fake eye because she had already won gouged by Billy, by Billy back then. That's one is more, that's, that's a sort of a black humor, but I actually kind of like for how it's presented. But the rest of the movie just doesn't really work. The passion is behind there, I get that, but that alone cannot save the, the product if it's just that bad, I'm sorry. Now, the big question would be, what if it's worse between this and the 2019 version? I really cannot tell, and I already wasn't particularly fond of wanting to actually get to that, but it's inevitable, so that's what we're, where we'll eventually lead up to. Dread but first, Pedro. Run from it. Destiny always yeah. arrives. <laughs> uh, it's just like, it, it just goes nowhere. It's just a bunch of stupid shit. Like, this movie doesn't have anything fun in it that, like, it's not scary. It's not fun. It's not creative. It's just dull. I'm just watching a bunch of. I, I get that they're adults, but it really feels a lot like I'm just watching the mean girls being put in a horror movie. Like, <laughs> um, that's what it feels like. And yeah, man, Lacey's career really peaked with. Um, She's doing uh, mostly TV stuff these days. So at the very yeah, least, yeah. you know, it's still going. It's just not that much known. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, I, I guess she's at the very least in the Harley Quinn show, so there is that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just hard. Like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of gore in, uh, involving people's eyes, and I don't know why. Like, this movie just relies entirely on shock value because it has nothing else to it. Because they, I get the feeling somewhere along the line, the director realized he was given a shit script, and the shock value is him trying to inject some kind of something that's at the very least somewhat memorable but the problem is it's for all the wrong reasons but he wrote so... the script oh we did yeah um... same, same as the director you know it was the well same in that case well in that case this is all your fault my buddy yeah, like i said um, yes, whatever the weinsteins may have done i don't think that the director and writer are innocent little lambs in all this well, whatever. The point is that, in, that this wasn't good, and I'm glad that's done because, yeah, this was, even though it was not even 90 minutes, it definitely wasn't particularly entertaining. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's very hard to even talk about this because there's such a ball of nothing. It's just people being stupid and, and the, the threats are not scary, so it's just hard to even care. Really, I don't. I, I, I'm struggling to even say anything interesting about this thing because it, it gives me nothing to work with. It's like I mentioned. Like, there's a whole lot of talk, but no show about how. Oh, the roads are closed. Trees are blocking the way. We never see that. It's just all told it's to just us. Just a storm. A generic stuff. And the, give it credit to Krampus. They showcased how deep was the storm and how the people could not get away from it. Yeah, they did. So, Teo, um, where do we go from here? Pedro asked, resting his head on his shoulder, contemplating the futility of the commentaries that have been happening so far. Ah, crap. He wasn't sure what to answer, because what uh, will wait the group forward was not exactly still uh, like Journey had. Ultimately, he found the courage and read the word of the title of the movie, the never-ending story to the next chapter, brought to you by the director of Zeus and Roxanne. All See right. Ya. See you then. See yeah. you.